Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to the next video in our full playlist of videos, where we take you through the complete installation of our DIY multi-zone mini split in our mobile home. Today we are going to be installing the inside units. Alrighty, so we are inside our house now, as you can clearly see, and longtime viewers, probably know exactly what room or area of our home we're in just by the color of that wall. Nice pale yellow. Lemon chiffonade, I think it was called. Fancy Chiffon pants aid. yellows. However you call it, say it. <laughs> Lemon it. chiffonade, please. <laughs> is that a drink or a... I don't know. What is it? Somebody Chiffon tell us. is like a type of fabric. Well, we have lemon fabric colored walls. So we are in the very center of the house which means that this is where we're going to need the biggest unit because it's going to have to go for the dining room, the living room, and the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go with the 18,000 BTU, which is twice as much as we're doing for the bedrooms at 9,000 BTUs apiece. What? Perfect. No critiques here. <laughs> Keep on. So this is a lot bigger unit than um, the practice one we put up in our bedroom. Shh. You don't want to tell them that we practiced before we actually show them how we did oh, something? Oh, please. <laughs> That's the perks of a multi-zone. We learned on the first one, and now we will show you on the second, and we'll look awesome. <laughs> Hopefully, because this one's bigger. <laughs> it's going to be harder to pick up. And we're really hoping it fits in between these two windows. It's going to be up near the ceiling, but still, we have the two windows here. We're hoping it fits in between. Way back whenever we did our kitchen and dining room renovation, I had a little glimpse into the future and I knew we would do a mini split someday and that's why I actually never trimmed out the windows. For those of you who are wondering, saying, oh my gosh, there's no trim on those windows, I totally knew why and I just was waiting to make sure it fit. thinks we can't center it in the room but I mean we can't drill through a stud no so we have deliberated and found out that we cannot center the unit on this wall because of the way that our studs are spaced on 16 inch on center if we center it with this bracket it's going to make the three and a half inch hole we have to cut for the line sets go right through a stud so no phooey mr. cool why'd you do that to us why would you put the center of the bracket and then 16 inches over you got to drill a hole for a stud so whatever it is what it is this is a total retrofit job anyway so angela has made the executive decision to mount it more to the left that way we can hit this part of the bracket with the stud and that is where the majority of the weight is on this unit it's kind of lopsided or heavier on one side so we're going to hold this in place poke a couple little holes through and then hold the metal bracket up and then drill and anchor it to the wall We've taken off the metal bracket off the back of the air handler unit and even though we use the cardboard template up there on the wall to drill small little pilot holes, we're going to hold this in place, make sure it's level off the metal bracket and then we're going to attach it to the wall and everything with wood screws and if we need to we'll put some anchors in there but we have got it lined up where it should be sufficiently supported on the studs.
with our metal bracket installed and with like a thousand screws in it to hold up, I don't know, stronger than Rock of Gibraltar here. Next thing to do is actually drill a three and a half inch diameter hole through the wall, through the insulation, and through the exterior of your home. This is by far the most scariest part of the installation. We've marked out our spot on the template. So all of our hopes and dreams lie on the template. Now it's time to drill it. And you want to drill not perfectly level, but if anything, a little bit of a downward slope so that your condensate drain lines from your air handler will flow and drain properly. You don't want to have any kind of moisture pooling or building up in here. So, let's go. Step one is the easiest because this is paneling in our dining room here. Now we get to have the fun of cutting through the insulation and then cutting through the metal aluminum siding. You pushed it aside on the other one. Nick way! This is also where you find a giant wasp nest in the wall or I don't know, a snake. Who knows? It's like the creepy fair games or whatever. What's in the box? Oh, it's gonna be tricky. So let me get that drill bit to start pilot hole. You wanna go outside and film it? Sure. Okay. With everything drilled, the next thing to do is install the wall thimble. This comes not in the air handler unit box, but in your line set box. The box that has all your giant hoses and everything. So that's where this guy lives. You install the tube from the inside towards the outside, and then once it goes through your wall, you trim everything to fit outside, but you guys will see that there in the tube. The thimble comes with a flat part cut on the round. The flat goes towards the bottom. That way your air handler sits over top of it with no problems. That's airtight. Titanic got nothing on that. With the wall thimble installed, the next thing to do is to bend the lines out of the back of the air handler unit and fish them through the wall. Before you fish them through, you want to use some of this tape. I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like duct tape or medical tape combined. Um, and you stretch it and wrap it around your line sets. It's supposed to keep them together. So I don't know. We'll see. I've heard that some people have problems with this adhering to everything and other people are fine so we'll see. We don't think this uh, tape, I don't even want to call it tape, it's not adhesive. We don't think this is going to do anything. We have tried stretching it as if it's like a shrink wrap fit. It doesn't seem to adhere to itself, but you know what? We'll try it for you guys, and uh, let's just see if something happens or if it's a grand failure. Well, this is one way to, yeah, see, we're going to fix this with some duct tape. There you go, Mr. Cool. I don't know what you're thinking about giving us that stuff, but we did it and we fixed it. You definitely need two people to do this. Angela is feeding the communication wires through, which this unit comes with 25 feet worth. And then she's going to guide in the line sets, drain tube, while I walk this into the wall. <laughs> and then, here, let me do it. 
hook this up top. And it snaps down like a, I think like a car hood. But, ta-da! So I think that's pretty easy. It's definitely not, I mean, overly complicated. Mm -mm. I mean, obviously the second one was easier than the first, but the first one went without any major hiccups, so that was good. It is a really large unit in our dining room, but it is what it is. It's better for it to be in the middle in the dining room than in the living room where it may not reach the kitchen quite as well, which would be the farthest away. Well, the kitchen so. is also the big heat producer. You know, mm -hmm. anytime you cook or whatever, that's where the heat comes from. So that was kind of our thinking. There's no heat producers here in the living room. So the Other cool, than us. <laughs> yeah, the cool air will at least spill over into the living room and will work well. Plus, it keeps us from having a large utilitarian style box here in our living room. Next thing to do is install the one in our boys bedroom, our newly renovated <laughs> boys bedroom. Putting a hole in the wall that we just put up. Yep. This is also why we waited and we have not installed any artwork or things on the wall in that room. So a little bit of forward thinking as far as that. The one in the boys room, like Angel said earlier, is a smaller 9,000 BTU unit. So thankfully it's not like four feet long yeah i feel like that's like the hood of a cadillac i feel like we just mounted the front end of a car in our dining room <laughs> anyway it is a smaller unit so it won't take up as much room but let's go get our stuff in there and destroy that freshly finished wall nice A brand new wall. This has already been totally hooked up. It does have air coming out in it, but this allows us to show you a couple of things. First, it does come with a remote and it has a little holder that you can hang on the wall or whatever. And it has a little LED thing that shows you what temperature it is out, set at, which is nice. But you can also turn it off because it's pretty bright at night. I'll open up the front here for you. So here are two removable filters so you can change it or clean them out every so often. This also has a USB, kind of like a flash drive that plugs in right here and that allows this to be controlled wirelessly through like your cell phone. Just wanted to give you an up close look at the air handler in this video. Well, the units are pretty easy to put in. I would suggest two people, especially for like the larger unit like we have in the center of our house, which is the 18,000 BTU. Mm -hmm. um, it is pretty wide and pretty heavy and you have to like line it up just right. So it does help. It is, it, it's heavy. Yeah, it's not lightweight, but they're not super, super heavy. No. Um, definitely a team job. I think the biggest... Oh, I guess the biggest benefit of having you there is I could focus on not dropping the box while you fed the lines yeah. and the condensate hose and most importantly like the 30 foot of wiring through the hole first. Yeah. So that was very beneficial to have just knowing that when you're there you say good then we can walk it on. You're in. not like holding it up and pushing. And... Yeah. Yeah. So. If you have to do this by yourself, I would advise having maybe a step ladder or something that is as close as you can get to your finished height. Sit it on top, balance it with one hand, and then feed it through. I mean, it's doable. I could see working out a solution to do it by myself, but if you can get help, 
it's very helpful to have help. It's so helpful. Help. <laughs> Help is helpful. Help. We seem to keep running into spacing issues with these units being where we wanted them and then stud alignment. I don't know if that is just everyone's going to be in that boat or maybe we were picking the wrong thing on the metal bracket to try and line up our studs and spacing with. But it seemed like everyone, we wanted it here but had to move it down a little bit. Otherwise we were trying to drill a hole through our wall studs and that just ain't happening. So for the OCD side, it's not in the middle of the room in any of them. <laughs> that's, that's totally me. And I notice it, especially in the dining room. But even in this room, this one looks pretty good. All right, this one passes my approval. That's why we're in here videoing. So just, I don't know, food for thought, something to think about. You may have better luck than us. I hope you have better luck than us on centering it in your space, but... Be willing to compromise because when the rubber hits the road, you're either going to have AC or not. So you'll get over your OCD pretty quick, I guess, huh? As much as I hate to do this, I want to stop the video here because I feel like we have covered a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff to digest. And when we go outside to hook this all together, there's going to be even more information and more stuff to digest. If you're here from the future, don't worry. It's down there in the playlist. Click it. Keep on rocking and rolling. Have some more fun. If you're watching real time, sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Well, guys, thanks for coming along as we put our ear handlers in. There are so many names to these things. I'm having a really hard time keeping them together. You're doing great, though. <laughs> ah, you spoke. <laughs> Leave us a comment below. We love to read them. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. See you. Bye. I couldn't help it. I had to speak. Otherwise, You're terrible. Otherwise, it's like, wow, Sam's just like, hmm. Never mind. It's taking they can't six. see in your nose. It's okay. Cause you got your nose so far up in the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so crestfallen. So say something like, I don't know. Well, guys, sorry. I don't know, bye. No. <laughs> okay. Hi. I totally you just messed totally you up. Messed totally totally me up. derailed like if the Titanic was a okay. train. Shh. That's pretty large. And this is pretty bright. <laughs> There's not enough. This. Okay. I'll do the welcome back to the next part of blah 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 mobile home multi zone. And then you say and this video is all about the indoor unit installation. Wait, well, okay. Don't you stand this way so the window's not fighting? No, you're fine. Okay. Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to the next part of our DIY mini split installation in our mobile home. And this, mm, send your thunder. I can't hush. No, that's fine. Go for it. Leave a comment below. We'd love to read them. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See ya. Bye. Are you sure that works? I feel bad for totally cutting you out. You always do that to me. I don't always. Usually I'm like, no, stop. You're about to run off a cliff. I weren't going to run off to just yet. I feel bad because you were saying something really good and I don't know if I can splice it. But can you say all that again? I don't know what I said. Well, just... My put, memory does not put your feelings like back in your head and and talk about your feelings again about the white box in the wall that is visibly working and on so yes we're filming this after the fact whatever all right do your the whole thoughts and closing again i'll be quiet i promise all i will say is see ya